vocês uh, do Duzem. Ele é também um dos meus mentores. Eu conheci-o uh, em 2007, uh, numa conferência internacional uh, que é promovida todos os anos, uh, enfim, pela, pela casa que, do ponto de vista profissional na, da Europa, uh, é uma referência nas áreas do coaching e do mentoring, um European Mentoring Coaching Council, também uma comunidade uh, de aprendizagem e de profissionais extremamente importante para quem é coach uh, profissional. É mais conhecido o International Coaching Federation, mas, uh, uh, enfim, uh, o meu coração está com, com o FCC e o, e, o, e o David é, de facto, um, enfim, um dos co-fundadores dessa instituição, que é uma referência uh, nesta área, um, que hoje em dia é aquilo que se denomina de uh, ambassador, embaixador, uh, portanto, desta organização. Eu vou permitir-me, então, fazer a apresentação do David, umas breves palavras, também em inglês, para poder partilhar com ele uh, aquilo que uh, vos vou dizer. Um, I love uh, David's style and his energy and humor. Um, as I mentioned to you already, David pioneered the development of mentoring and coaching in Europe. Um, He has been described as one of the world's most thought and provoking and entertaining <laughs> entertainer, uh, speakers and writers. Uh, I think you have already wrote 55 or... 60. 60, <laughs> well, um, this is amazing. Yeah. And I, I guess the last one is, is this... Isn't it or? One of it's about five ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's amazing. We, we usually speak, uh, I would say, once a month and it's always with projects. And, and yes, it's like a child, you know, our, our, our children. And actually, he, 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 he That's because men never grow up. <laughs> You're probably right. And yeah. um, he even has wrote. Uh, very recently, and I was uh, uh, forgotten that um, a, children, uh, a book for children, and um, this this book is, is is really amazing because it's based in uh, his uh, own family characters, and uh, I, I am remembering the image that I have already uh, saw of the book. So. David is, is really um, someone really, really special. And when I uh, met him, actually, I, I went to this conference because I, I wanted to, to, to meet a few people. And when I met him, I, I took it and, and uh, he stayed here with me. And, and his, his, his generosity, his knowledge um, has been um, enormous for me. Uh, I, I guess I, I don't have words to express how he has uh, impact on my own life. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy that we, we have this chance of having you here with, with us. So welcome, David, and uh, it's Thank now you. your turn. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> first thing I'm going to say is that I get enthusiastic, and when I get enthusiastic, I tend to talk faster. <laughs> so if you can, if I'm talking too fast, please go and, thank you, and slow me down. Okay? So, so please do that. The second thing, is I've, I'm aware that you've been sitting down for a long time. Um, and um, so I thought... Just to start off with, we just do, do something that got you moving. Okay? So uh, what I'd like you to think of, something that you've wanted to learn for a long time. Okay? It could be, I don't know, servo quiet, or um, to play the harp, or, or whatever. But something you've wanted to learn for a long time. Okay? Can you all think of something? Okay. Now I'd like you to find, in this room, somebody who either could say, I could help you learn that, or who could say, I know the person where you can go to learn that. Okay? So, have a, just take a few minutes. Find somebody who can be a gateway or a direct <laughs> Yoga. 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 
she's also the goddess of, of, of martial arts. She was conceived um, as a thought, um, uh, fully armoured, very uncomfortable conceiving in any other way. Um, but she was, but she was conceived uh, in fully, fully armoured. She was very macho. She's challenging. She's also to go part of the Earth Mother. She's very nurturing and supportive. And it's this combination of challenge and support that makes mentoring so powerful. So we go, we, we, we go, we go all the way back, really, to, 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 to the Greek, start to Greek stories, thousand, a couple of thousand years ago, three thousand years ago. Um, then we saw a men mentoring being applied through apprenticeships. Now I, I think those were, were, were common across the whole of Europe, um, where you, you, you basically would take them and you learn to trade. Um, and so you, your, your mentor was the person you were apprenticed to, effectively. Um, and if you were really lucky, because it was generally a male thing, uh, if, you, if, if you were really lucky, you got to, manage to, to marry your mentor's uh, daughter, and then, then, then that set you up for your career for the rest of your life. Um, we first started to see mentoring as a form of activity, something where you have programs and, and, and you are and supporting it, um, in, the, in the early 1980s in the United States. Um, and what happened was an American model of mentoring started to take place. And what they did was they formalized what was happening informally in the States. Now, American culture is very interesting because it's actually very much based upon power mm -hmm. and hierarchy. You, know, you can say, you know, you can say, call me Jim, call me Gabe, uh, but don't question my decisions. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there is, there, there, there is a strong sense of power you know, and the exertion of power as being important. And so, mentoring, American mentoring, we call sponsorship mentoring. And if you think, remember the film, the, 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 um, uh, the firm, with Tom Cruise and King Hammond? Yeah. yeah. Um, the mentor is there to protect, so to protect the mentee against the company. Yeah. So that it's a protege, it means someone who's protected, and they talk about proteges, whereas we would talk about mentees. Um, and in, in, in the film, the, the, the mentor gets shot at the end. Now, I don't think that's written into the script for, my, for, for all British relationships, <laughs> but in some cases it should be. <laughs> um, um, you know, if you're not satisfied with your venture, you get shot at the end. I think this could have a real sharp look at face. This one, we, we brought this one, they, they talked about, about overseeing the career of a young man. I mean, forget it, girls. They won't even consider for men. It's a male thing. And then it got transported, we brought it to Europe in which I had to see how it would work. And it didn't work here at all. And it didn't work here because, firstly, we, 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 we had a, a whole set of, of, of objectives within organisations to, to get people to do things for themselves, to think for themselves, to manage their own careers, to manage their own self-development, but with help. And so modern mentoring, which is, which is primarily much less directive, much more about how asking you the questions that make you think, um, emerged here in, in Europe. Um, and to a large extent, it's been transplanted back into the States as well. But you still see around the world mixtures of sponsorship mentoring and developmental mentoring. Um, so you've got these two models. Um, in 1985, we put out the book, Everyone Needs a Mentor, and that's really been the basis for, 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 for developmental mentoring around the world. Um, Kathy Cram, who the, 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 the doyen of uh, American sponsorship mentoring, um, brought her book out the same month in the States. So we have these two, these two movements, and it's been very powerful because they, it gives you two alternative ways of looking at it. Sponsorship mentoring is fine. It has some negatives in the sense that it tends to produce clones. So the person you're meant to be your sponsor, what happens, there's a power element in here, be like me. Um, and one of the things that we've learned very deeply is that in mentoring, in developmental mentoring, it's about if you, you try to help somebody be like themselves. And one of the problems we identify with entrepreneur mentoring for entrepreneurs, and, and, and particularly for female entrepreneurs, is, is, is the fact that there's an expectation you will become like somebody else. I really, really want to release you to be who you are, your authentic self. And that, I think, is a big, big issue. The European Mentoring Centre is the primary body looking after mentoring in Europe. Um, and, uh, and, and, and certainly in, in a business context, in, internationally, there isn't anything else. There's an international mentoring association in the States, it's about schools and educational mentoring uh, and voluntary mentoring. So we, my, 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 my set up and, and sold to three companies now, um, or where not. Um, and um, I'm now, having retired and, and, and thought I was not going to do it again, set up two more. 
Um, and one of them is, is this network, we did Coaching Mentoring International, and uh, Andrew is one of our representatives here. Um, and what basically that's trying to do is a network of consultant trying to come trainers across the world whose role is to assist organisations, whether they're companies or professional or you know, societal organisations like yourselves, to create effective mentoring programmes and to make them work most efficiently and effectively. Um, and so, what do we mean by mentoring? Well, here's a definition. It's a helping relationship based on the exchange of knowledge, experience and work. Mentors help somebody less experienced gain confidence, clearer purpose, insight and wisdom. Come back to this word wisdom again. It's an old-fashioned word, but it's really important. You know, wisdom is about judgment. Making the right judgments for yourself and for your stakeholders, your families, you know, your customers, your, your, your employees. But also making, um, making right judgments in, a, in, in the widest context possible. Context possible. Um, here's another definition, here's another part of it. In developmental intervention, the mentor too is changed by the relationship. The mentors always learn as much as not more than the mentees. In fact, in some programs inside organizations, we measure the success of the program by how much the mentor will learn. Um, so if you're not teaching your mentor something, you're not working hard enough. So you should be working with hard. Teach, they, they've got a lot to learn your mentor. Um, we all do. Um, and that's part of the fun of being a mentor, part of the privilege of being a mentor, is that you learn so much from it. Mention is powerful for all these reasons. It focuses on you. It's all about you. It's in your time scale. It's not going on a course. It's, 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 it can be expensive. Going on a course, it doesn't necessarily mean it happens at the right time for you. But it's very, and a lot of the content will be irrelevant to you. But mentoring focuses on what's important to you right now and how you think about it. It helps you raise your horizons. We know that, that, that particularly for mentoring, mentoring for women within a gender context, mentoring for women in particular helps people to raise what, you, what you're capable of. What you can, what you can you, it helps you to think, to, 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 to be much more ambitious in your dreams. Um, and one of the things that we've noticed in the most successful female entrepreneurship programs is people who start off thinking it's just a lifestyle business for them start actually thinking about, actually, this could be a real business that employs many people and grows and has a bigger impact on society. You know, and, and so actually raising your ambition, because one of the things that's very clear is the amount of time and energy it takes to start a lifestyle business is not that different from the amount of time and energy it, start, it takes to create a real growth business. Um, it bridges the experience gap. So you may be starting out in an area, but your mentor typically has got lots of experience, life experience, business experience, that they can help you, or help you with your thinking around your thinking, develop your thinking. Um, this is you know, this we keep coming back to quality of thinking. You know, it's, it's asking the questions that make you deeply reflect. Um, sometimes these questions <coughs> can, can take them years later. <laughs> I had somebody send me an email at the beginning of this year, and they said, you won't remember me, but you met me at a conference, um, or we spoke at a conference 15 years ago, and, and you were kind enough to give me 10 or 15 minutes at the end of the conference, and you asked me some really powerful questions. So I've been thinking about those ever since. <laughs> and two years ago, I finally, <coughs> finally managed to answer them, and I completely changed my career. And I'm now doing something totally different. I just wanted to write to say thank you. I don't know what the questions were. <laughs> but it's great fun that people that you can have that impact on people. So it does open up new worlds. Um, so what one mentoring program we did inside a company, we gave everybody dream catchers. You know, dream catchers like the Indian, the Indians create to capture your dreams. Uh, it's, it's great worth thinking about it. And we say it's a two-way learning relationship. So we talk about developmental mentoring. One of my colleagues, Liz Berwick, um, who's done lots of programs. In, she, she ran a program called Women in Engineering, for example, a mentoring program for female engineers. Um, and these, I'm not going to read all these out, but you can see you know, it, uh, it, 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 there's a lot of, you know, it's working on phrases like working on capability. It's not passing on knowledge, because the knowledge the mentor has may not be relevant to you and your business, mm -hmm. but it's actually using the mentor's knowledge so that they can ask the questions that will help you <coughs> to, to, to think about your own business, your own context and circumstances. One of the ways we define mentoring that, 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 that we find really helpful is that what mentors do is to help you have the inner conversation, the conversation with yourself. 
about who you are and what you want. To understand your internal context. But also to help you understand the external context. What's going on around the world. How your business idea fits into reality. And the conversation between your and the outdoor, or your, the conversation is about aligning the, the, your inner context and the outer context. That's what mentors do. We, we, we help bridge that, 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 that gap. And that makes a big difference to people. Um, okay. Okay. So some outcomes. In our, in, in our research, as well, I think we found four kinds of outcomes. There's the, the career outcome. So if you have a, if you have a, um, uh, a mentor, you're more likely, if you're within an organization, to earn more. Or if you're independent, <coughs> you're more likely to, to you tend to be earn more. One study says, People who are mentored typically earn 20% more than people who aren't. Um, your business is significantly more likely to survive through startup if you have a mentor. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. so, yeah, these, these are positive things. Um, the learning that you take. You know, what have you learned about yourself? What have you, what have you learned that will enable you to be more effective entrepreneurs? The enabling things, having a better personal development plan or indeed, a better business plan. Has your, how, how, well, how, how, how well does your business plan really reflect the kinds of things that might happen and, and look ahead? And the emotional issues. We talk, we talk about greater self-belief. I'm standing there, getting in the way while you're taking photos. Aren't I? Um, but then the, 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 the idea that you, that, you, that you can believe in yourself um, and that you're, that you're capable of even more than you think you're capable of. And we'll come back to that later. Uh, and it stimulates dialogue for transitions. There's all sorts of things there. Um, at each stage of development of your business, there are critical challenges that you're going to meet. <coughs> at each stage of your own development, there are going to be critical challenges. You know, having a child, or another child, or, you know, the, each of these things, they're, 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 they're critical transitions. How do you deal with this? One of the most powerful programs that we have inside organizations is called maternity mentoring. And, 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 and I'll come back to that again in a minute, too. Um, it's about challenge. Who asks you the really difficult questions? Yeah. Who, who tells you? One of the things I love to say to chief executives of both businesses and entrepreneurs is, yeah, who tells you when you're an idiot? <laughs> um, I most of them say my wife <laughs> or my children. Um, but, yeah, who tells you when you're an idiot? When you're when you're being headstrong an idiot? When you're being stupid? Yeah, we all need a few people, just critical friends to tell us when we're, when we're stupid. Um, I have lots of them. <laughs> Um, and they do it frequently. <laughs> and it will show me where I'm, but later where how stupid I've been. <laughs> Succession planning. Yeah. It's all very well. You start a business, but, what, but, but yeah. who's going to take over from you? One of the critical transitions we see is as, as, you, as, as you start the business, you might think, I'm just doing it on my own. Uh, although increasingly, we're finding the most successful entrepreneurial businesses are ones where you have a team. And so it's not just you. You've got other people to bounce off, and you've got to come, you've got, you've got uh, other talents to draw on, which complement yours. But yeah, once you, that, that, that first two or three people that you've got, then the transition, you know, so there's the hiring your first person. Then when you get to about ten people, there's a big transition where you stop doing things, or and start really being a manager, because you can't afford to be doing the job anymore. You've got to be managing it. Then there's a transition at about thirty when you become a proper organisation, a proper company, and so forth. Each of these key transitions, you've got to think about the people that you're, you're, you're appointing. Um, one, of mentor does, one of the most valuable things that a mentor does in a startup business is help you think about, for example, the shareholding, if you, if you, become, if you have shares. Who do you give the shares to? The biggest mistake that so many small businesses make is to start by, by dividing up the shares between all sorts of people because they're valuable at the beginning. But then you outgrow them. And suddenly your business with 30 or 40 or, or more people, and the people who own the shares are not actually at the same level as you are. And so you find you've got to get rid of them because, they, because they're now a dead weight on the business. And they have bigger expectations than, they, than, than they're actually entitled to. So you have all of those problems. A mentor can help you think those, things, those problems through before you get there. And, and the creative thinking. You know, how do you actually step outside of your normal way of thinking and into a, into a different area? Um, how do you actually think about what might happen to business or, or completely remake the business? One of our studies was, was um, of, of business, entrepreneurial businesses that are out around the world, which has which succeeded in areas where everybody else was struggling, simply by saying, 
everything, just look at the way the business works. Everything that business, that, that's, that normally people do in that, in that business area, let's do it differently. Let's do it the opposite way we're out of time. And we've created all sorts of things, like the, like the, the anti-shoe shop, which is a, a wonderful idea. Yeah. So you know, typically the shoe shop, you, um, you, you, you go into a shoe, you go into a shoe shop, um, and there's lots and lots of shoes on, on, on display, and you, you look around and you choose one um, that, you want, that you think will suit you. I mean, I know it's different for men and for women, in shoe shop, you know, a guy will go in and he'll look and say, yes, I'll try those on, and if they fit, you buy them. And if you're a woman, you, you try on everything in the shop, and then you buy a handbag, um, or, or something like that, anyway. Um, but, but, but if you have, but, but if you, but, but, you know, the point is you've got to go into the shop, and you've got to try all these things, and you're, you're, it's just luck whether they've got your size. So the anti-shoe shop, you go into the shop once, you have your feet measured, you sign a place to say, I already have 20 pairs of expensive Italian shoes, um, and then, and then you, you are given an avatar. And you go online, and you look, and, you, and as the new lines come out, you, your avatar, you can see walking across the stream, wearing those shoes, <coughs> and you think, yes, I look good in that, I'll have a pair of those. <coughs> so you never have to go to the shoe shop again because they get sent to you. But, but because you've actually tried them out <coughs> in your virtual. Now, you know, people are doing this now, these things. So you, you can change any sector by thinking about doing everything, or and a lot of things, the opposite way around. So we took, we've got these two models of mentoring, and I'm not going to go through in detail because we don't have time. But you see, you know, the critical thing in sponsorship of mentoring is hierarchical. The mentor's influence is important. Um, it's instrumental help, so that do, it's about doing things for you rather than supporting you emotionally. Um, there's, it's a one-way learning relationship. Um, and sometimes in sponsorship mentoring, you, the line manager in, a, in an organization can be the mentor. You can't do that in developmental mentoring. You're both working to minimize the power distance. You're both colleagues. And the fact that the, that the mentor may be older, wiser, perhaps more experienced, um, older and wiser don't necessarily go together. Uh, um, uh, but you know, the fact that, that they are able to, that they're, they're able to, to, they have a different perspective is what they, it doesn't seem to say that there's a power distance. You are actually two people working together, learning from each other. Um, and, and so what it basically the mentor is helping you to do is become more effective, more self-efficacious. We desperately need a gender focus in mentoring. Mentor. We need a gender focus across the, the, across the, the, the globe in the way that we work. Um, we know that in societies where more women are economically active, that societies are more, are more, are more prosperous. We know that, where in, that, 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 that effect is significantly greater where, where, women are, where there are more women entrepreneurs. In fact, the more women are entrepreneurs there are, the more prosperous the society becomes. So we need you to do that. But if we look at you know, women directors, you know, there's a lot of work, the, the work being done there. We're gradually seeing through quotas um, in, in, in Norway and other places, seeing big improvements. Interestingly, the quota system in Norway, it would have been, was not possible to fulfill the quotas probably, or, or the, women, the women that were, were appointed to the, to, to the boards in Norway, when Norway started this, they needed, they needed self-reassurance. They needed to feel that they belonged there. And the mentoring programs that supported that well, what gave them that feeling of belonging? And the fact that they were as good at and as and perhaps better than the men that had been there before. In academia, you know, it's all, <coughs> the number of papers, the academic papers published by men and published by women, pretty much the same globally. But the number of professors, you know, it's much, much more difficult for a woman to become a professor. Um, we need to change that, and there are things that there are programs to change that. We talk, we're talking here, you know, small, the small business sector again, this is you. Um, but we find that whatever the sector, the, gen the, more, the greater the diversity of, of, of the gender diversity you have, the greater decision making, the, the more effective decision making uh, um, it is, and the greater the creativity is. You know? When you look at the businesses that have gone into deep trouble, you know, the, the Royal Bank of Scotland, Anderson, Aimer, all of these companies, one of the factors that stands out in all of them is the paucity, the lack of women at the top. In every case. Uh, 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 and, and so that it, 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 it's, it's, a, it's a clear factor that's, that's driving this. There's a whole variety of programs here. The Cherry Bow Foundation has a program specifically for women in emerging economies. Uh, <coughs> women in engineering, um, that's a program in the UK, but there's also a similar, similar thing in the States. There are programs, all of these, I'm not going to go through, go through all of them. Uh, but you can see this, there's, 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 and the last one, uh, the European Cross Mentoring Program, I know it's been involved with this, this one out of Luxembourg. But there's loads of them. 
And there's more every year, and it's great. Uh, we've just been working with, with um, a team in, in Morocco, uh, where there's a Moroccan um, female entrepreneurs uh, program, which is extremely powerful, um, and, and a bunch of ladies who, who I, I think could, could frighten off and could frighten off any invaders. <laughs> They're brilliant. Um, and so we, 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 we've seen this movement across the world. Um, the only place we've not seen it, places like Sudan and, uh, and Iran, but then that's another problem. Mm -hmm. The return, just briefly about the maternity metric. What we see here is that return, well, the, the retention of, of people who go off on maternity leave is much higher if they have a mentor to, to, to ease them back into, into the role. Um, uh, this, it, managing the guilt trade. Yeah. Yeah. How, how many of you have got, yeah. have, 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 have got children? Okay. How many of you felt guilty when you went, when you went back to work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what you mean, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, but it's actually managing those processes, managing the transition. Um, this question, what's a good enough mum? Yeah. So many, so many women when they go back to work feel guilty that they're not that, 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 about this, and they're not being a good enough mum to their children. But yeah, what's a good enough mum? And then every time we ask that question, I, I, or I ask it as a mentor, <coughs> and we talk about what a good enough mum is, we find that actually the person is being much better than a good enough mum. <coughs> um, but you know, the idea that you need to be a perfect mum and be able to be superwoman is, is not tenable. And the more senior you are, the more of a leader you are the more difficult it is when you come back into an organization to re-engage with your networks because things have moved on. <coughs> Mentoring helps you to do this. Um, and so we're seeing a, a resurgence of, 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 of maternity mentoring, which is an idea 20 years old, 25 years old. Uh, <coughs> some research data, um, data. Um, women are rated more highly on 9 out of 10 leadership dimensions than men. It's marginal. It's not a big difference. But the idea that, 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 that women, that men, that men make more natural leaders, which has been so good, is, is endemic. Um, it's not proven. The interesting one, the envisioning, is the strategic thinking for the future. Um, and one of the reasons for having um, um, a, mi a, a mixed gender, a mi mixed gender in terms of mentors, how you both male mentors and female mentors, you don't need to just have one, you have one formal one, and a lot of other people around as well, who become your informal mentor network. So having people that, who are good at thinking strategically, at envisioning the future, helping you create your own vision and adjust your own vision. <coughs> so that's really important. Um, what else have you got here? I'm pointing at the right label go. Now, I thought this was an interesting piece of research. C-level uh, uh, women, that's women in, 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 in high executive roles, <coughs> might enjoy more respect in the workplace if they develop their more typically female traits. One of the problems with sponsorship mentoring is, is in, and, and having a sponsor, which is being heavily promoted recently, is that actually having a sponsor pushes you towards being like the sponsor mm -hmm. and adopting more masculine, more male traits. That isn't what's needed. We actually need women to be themselves. One, I, I, I recall a, a mentoring relationship that we created um, for an HR director in the company. And what she wanted, she, all, the guy, all the people on the board, and she was the HR manager at that point. She wanted to become HR director. All the people on the board were men above her, and she didn't want to be like them. So she had a female mentor, somebody who'd become a chief executive herself, but had gone through that transition. And this person helped her until she became an HR director. And then once she'd become an HR director, she said, I don't care what gender my mentor is, because now all I want is the experience of somebody who's done everything. But so there's, so there's, this, there's, this, there's, this, there's this choosing your mentor according to what's the nature of the transition you want to make if, and, and what you want from it. There are things that men can do, that male mentors can do, broadly speaking, more generally, more, 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 more frequently than men do. So men will tend to give you more transactional. So they will help you with the practicalities. They'll introduce you to the right people. They'll explain the politics to you yeah, and things like that. Um, Whereas women will give you more support, they will help you believe that women are much better at helping you build self-belief yourself in men. So this difference is it's worth having both genders as men. We want we want gender diversity across the board. Um, and having a mixture of mentors, perhaps one formal mentor and other people around you using the mentoring capacity, appears to be most effective. Um, we talked about you know, the, the original mentoring programs being, being male focused focused. But the idea that, 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 that you're only men are heroes, the heroic leader. Now what's changing 
in organizations. And what we're seeing in female-led organizations is the concept of collective leader or distributed leadership. The idea that leadership is no longer a function, if it ever was, that could be actually focused in one individual. The leadership is too complicated in modern businesses to be run, to be invested in one person. It's invested in a group of people uh, with different capabilities who take leadership at different points and different times. And so where we see, even when we see organizations, very successful organizations, you think, well, there's one character who's the leader. Actually, when you look behind the scenes, there is one person who's got lots of weaknesses and who has around them a number of other people who compensate for those weaknesses and are counterbalance. It's a leadership group or team. It's very, really an individual leader. Uh, and when somebody tries to be the individual leader, businesses fail. So I think you know, what, we, what we're beginning to see it, it, it is, is a, a really effective leadership team has, has masculine and feminine characteristics, if we can be fine, if there is some, there are such things. And this issue of career orientation versus learning orientation, you know, um, the, the sponsorship mentoring focused on your career. Developmental mentoring is focused on learning. And that's why developmental learning and developmental mentoring is so much more powerful, because basically, the career you can create yourself, your career is something that largely happens to you because of all the opportunities you create. <coughs> The learning is what enables you to take advantage of the opportunities that are created. Come on, it's not like anything. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay right. um, Some of the things that we, 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 um, we would like to identify, making the step from, in, in organisations, making the step from manager to director is really important, really difficult. Um, if you're the only woman on board, the data tells us quite clearly if you're the one woman on the board, said eight or nine other people, you're, you, you actually have minimal impact. You can, um, something I think Tony was saying earlier, you might actually make people um, better behaved, but the, the actual, in terms of decision making, it has minimal impact because you tend to be marginalised. Um, and what the data tells us is you have to have three women at the top um, in order to have the, the impact that you are. The two women is a caucus, um, a cabal, three women is actually an influence group. So that, that's why in, in Norway it's very has to be in fact having 50-50. Um, we need to, the, the, most organizations do not have a, a, an appropriate pipeline of female directorial talent. Um, even female-led organizations sometimes don't have that. Um, and some of the critical competencies that, that, that we need, presence, authenticity, compassion. So many women will get into the top of organizations lose compassion on the way, then they lose their effectiveness as leaders. Um, and toughness and resilience. Yeah. These appear to be four of the fundamental comp competences. Now you can see that those four competences are, are also vital for an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur. Would you agree with that? Um, and if you think about it, your presence, being, being able to stand up and, make, and be listened to, being authentic, being true to yourself, having compassion for us, being listened to, and the toughness and the resilience. You've got those four things, it's kind of hard to fail. You know, you're gonna, you, that, those, those are the winning combinations. Um, we know that in, in, the, in terms of organizations, um, the, 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 the higher up the, goal, the organization you go, the more easy it is for a man to get promoted than for a woman. For a woman. And that's why so many women choose entrepreneurship. In one study we did 25 years ago, we looked at 50 women entrepreneurs or, and 50 women at the top of the top of large organizations. And what we found was, in both cases, the majority of them, the vast majority of them, pointed to a mentor. Somebody who had a critical point in their career helped them either to say, I am prepared to work within the organization, or to say, actually, I have the courage to leave the organization and do my own thing. The mentor was the person who helped them make that critical decision. Um, I think that that's a valuable thing, uh, area. Um, uh, oh, I'm going backwards now. Right, here we go. Um, I think this is boring, we'll carry on. Um, <laughs> I've also gone through some time. Um, there's a difference between mentors and coaches, and you can see some of the differences here. Um, so mentoring t tends to be relatively long-term, whereas coaching is short-term. Mentoring is, 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 is less focused, it's much broader about what you do, whereas coaching tends to be focused on a very specific skill or behavior that wants to change. Um, and so uh, the mentor's networks are much more important. 
um, whereas a coach would tend to use more psychology-based tools. Now, these are some of the core things that we find, the differences between coaches and mentors in the working place. You may want to have a coach as well. Mm -hmm. If you've got a specific skill, a specific area you want to work on, then a coach is great. You probably also want to have some consultants around, because you know, if, if marketing is not your thing, then maybe you need somebody who can help you with that. But mentors help you with your own goal development. Um, and we can see that, mo that the majority of chief executives in what in variety of studies show having a mentor is significant in their careers. Um, and I'll eat more from where he's done this. I'll skip this one as well. Um, here's some of the skills we're looking for. Mentors have got lots of experience, but they've also got the wisdom not to throw it at you, not to tell you what to do. Um, ma mentors, any mentor that isn't still learning, is probably a liability. So one of the first things I would always ask a potential mentor is, tell me about your own learning journey. What are you planning to learn this year? Um, they, they need to be in the world, in the world of business. You know, once they're retired, their utility goes, it's, it's a bit like having a sell-by date. You know, like a yogurt in the supermarket. Um, or when, when you go into the fridge, you find that the back of the back of the fridge, you've got a yogurt that says, you know, the sell-by date about six months ago. Uh, yes, um, yeah, that probably isn't going to be very helpful <laughs> because they need to be vital, they need to be connected. Um, they need a high level of emotional intelligence. They need to be able to empathize and understand. We talk about empathetic curiosity. Um, and they need to be well networked because they don't know anybody. Then it's not that they, they will necessarily introduce you to people in networks, although they might, but they need to understand how to help you grow your networks. Um, you don't still be getting much luck out of this, do you? No. <laughs> These are, again, you see the similarity between the qualities that need to be an entrepreneurs? Uh, but humility is probably the top requirement of an effective mentor. Grab curiosity. Being in really genuinely interested in you and your business. The gravitas, having a sense of presence themselves. And again, authenticity. Not trying to tell you what to do, not trying to play up to you. These four characteristics are the fundamentals that we would see in an effective mentor, a mentor for an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur for an entrepreneur. For an entrepreneur. Um, some of the questions that you might like to ask yourself. You know, where, do, where do you actually find the time for your development? You know, are you spending so much time running the business that you're not thinking about how you grow? Um, who can you rely on to, to challenge you positively? Um, how do you change the way that you lead in terms of what the business needs? <coughs> you need to do this in, in, in any business that goes from one person to a hundred people. In that period of time, you will need to change your leadership style at least three times to be effective. So, how are you going to do that? Um, how do I persuade other people to behave differently? What do you really want personally out of, out of using them, out of your business? How do you get a bigger perspective on it? Um, how do you get a life? It's important because you can invest all of your time and your energy in the business and lose so much. Yeah. And if you're trying to balance family and the business, how do you do that in the most effective way? And I mean, one, it's one of the most common conversations that mentors and mentees have, uh, whether in all contexts, uh, people who are in the workplace. How do I get a life? Particularly, the more senior, the more of a leader you are, I think every single leader has this conversation one way or another if they are really effective and really concerned about their first result. We've seen a lot of business, um, that I mentioned between big and small businesses. So big businesses provide mentors to small businesses. Now one downside is those big businesses don't actually understand, or the big managers there don't understand what it's like to run a business where something <coughs> that where you, you can't actually say, oh, I need some photocopying done, I'll hand it to somebody else. No, this is what you have to do your own. By and large, um, so yeah, um, uh, so they don't really understand. It. But what the per what, what happens is, is is you start to be able they have, they have access to all sorts of bigger information groups. So you can use them in a transactional way. And one program we were talking about over dinner last night was, was one where um, where the the, uh, the mentors were able to act, to act as a bridge with the expert departments in their own company. So you wanted some marketing information, some marketing ideas. They were able to help you to link up with the marketing people inside their company. So they were helping you network within that bigger company. 
And, and of course, they were learning to become more entrepreneurial in their own thinking, which is the real benefit to a company providing the mentors. Um, in our research on talent, we found there are four critical dialogues that people need to take, exactly, take into account. One is the internal dialogue. Look at who you are, what your strengths are, where you're going, what's positive, what's important to you, your purpose in life. Um, in fact, let's just stop at that point. Let's do just, just a, are we doing on time? Well, I'm going to Ten minutes, okay. Um, just as a brief, brief thought, there's a, if you think about your purpose in life, what is the critical question you ask yourself every time you make a quick, a big, a big decision? Let me, let me explain how we come to this. Many years ago, I, I was writing a book on excellent companies. And we looked at, um, one of the companies we looked at was Clarks, who make shoes. You probably, might have probably made me wearing Clark shoes. Um, and what we wanted to understand was, how could a company making shoes in, a, in a, where every other company making shoes had gone out of business many, many decades before. How was it successful as a global company? How did it work? And I went down to visit them, and I went into the showroom in the village where they, the small village where they were, and it was, it was beautiful. It was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of money spent in it. Then we went to the next house, next building, and into a little old house, and we went upstairs um, <coughs> and into the boardroom. And it was complete contrast. It had once obviously been well, very well furnished, uh, very you know, expensive old furniture, but nobody repaired it for years. There was plaster falling off the walls. There, there was stuffing coming out of the chairs. The car, I mean, it was clean. There were holes in the carpet. And I was quite amazed at this, but the chief executive said, ah, but you have to remember the company question. And I looked stupid, and he said, the company question is, but does it sell shoes? So whenever we've got a difficult, whenever we, we, we're going to spend money, we ask ourselves the question, does it sell shoes? <laughs> Sales sell shoes. <laughs> Employee welfare sells shoes because, the, because it makes sure that the shoes are all good quality. So, but we've never found that we've never actually been able positively to say yes when we had anybody spent, said, that suggested spending any money on the boardroom. Is it, isn't that great, these, 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 these powerful questions? So I would recommend to you that as young entrepreneurs, you think about... Uh, What's the critical question for you? Yeah. When you have to make a decision about yourself and your business, what's the questions, the question or questions that you ask yourself? I think that's something to go away and reflect upon. It's not, not, not to answer now, but, but yeah. what's the question you ask yourself when you're making those difficult decisions? Um, sorry, I should have said the other three dialogues. Dialogue about the immediate world environment is, you know, who, who, who else do you, do you talk to? Who's your key stakeholders? Um, and um, if you're an organisation, if you're within a large organisation, you might want to find out what are the what are the ambitions of women in the organisation. Very few organisations actually do this; they, they assume that what the ambitions will be. And then the the dialogue, and, and, and in many organisations now, what's happening is is there's this conversation in the internet where the real leadership is being exerted, and, and real leadership turns out to increasingly to be divided up into three functions: identifying an issue that needs to be dealt with coming up with creative ways of dealing with it, and creating the resources and implementing the resources for making the things happen. The intriguing thing is that actually none of these need to be done at the very top level. Even the resources, which is the most likely, doesn't have to be done at that top level. And many organisations are remaking leadership to say it's a distributed function. It isn't in one person. It's distributed between these three things, and the people who do this may come together almost at random, which is a completely new way of thinking about leadership. Okay, some of the, the, the responsibilities of mentors, I'm not going to read them all out. Um, I'm just going to pick up the creating a power free and open environment for learning dialogue, for really talking about things. Um, your responsibilities, you know, respecting their time, um, you know, helping them create this power free dialogue. Well, thank you. I'm not going to use those anyway. Yes, thank you. Um, <coughs> maintaining confidentiality and challenging them. <laughs> You will find that you get far more out of your mentor if you challenge your mentor. Um, and what else have we got here? That's going to Yes. These are just, I'll probably end up after, after these three. But these are some of the things that we think about in helping you, in helping you work through what you want from your business and who, and who you are. That first conversation. So, here's a conversation that mentors will tend to have with mentees. The first thing is, what do you value yourself for? 
The second question is, what do other people value you for? And the third one, what prevents other people valuing you in the way you want them to? And the last one is, if you want to change how people value you, how can you do that? Now these are questions you can ask for yourself. But as an entrepreneur, you and your business are intricately tied together. Your identity and the identity of your business are pretty much the same. And therefore, if you want your business to be valued, you have to start with valuing yourself. And what's important about that? The values that you want to apply. Um, and this is a way, if you like, of structuring your business plan. Or your marketing plan, whatever. But this is the rep this is this is actually it starts within you. The person that you are creates the character of your business. And the moment that you lose that connection, you lose control of your business. And there's some really good studies from Sweden that have shown that as businesses grow and grow, when they when they lose that link with the personality of the founder, that is the most dangerous point in terms of the survival of that business. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then thinking about your strengths and, and weaknesses. So it's another tool that we use. What if each of your strengths are fully developed? <coughs> which of them is merging? Which are embryonic? Studies of Australia, Australian entrepreneurs, both male and female, indicate that almost all of them have, are people who actually have, like most of us, some quite big flaws. You know, they're, not, they're not perfect people. But what they've done is to create around them um, a, a group of people who support them, who, 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 who actually compensate for, this, for their weaknesses. <coughs> Um, and allow them to focus their energies on their strengths. And indeed, one of the things that we were, that we were, that we were, we were working with, 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 with entrepreneurs with, that we find most important is to start up with saying, what is your energy for? What really energizes you? Because the things that you are energized by are the things you're going to be successful in. And if things don't energize you, then you're probably not going to succeed. So the honesty about where does your energy lie? And then the last one of these three here, oops, is just defining yourself. I am the person who, and it's, the, 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 it's, it's about defining and describing you. And you have something, you know, I'm the person who believes, um, uh, maybe for example, um, that, um, 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 that other people have, um, will always do their best in order, in, in order to achieve the goals of the business. If you let them, if you let them, I mean that's the kind of statement you would do. But it's actually defining your philosophies, the fundamental underpinnings of your business. And the earlier you do that in the business, the more those those principles will take root, and the easier it will be for people to differentiate to differentiate your business from everybody else's business. Um, I think that 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 again seems to me to be one of the fundamental characteristics of an effective entrepreneurial business, and one of the things we're mentors that can help most is actually helping you differentiate. Why is this business different? How do you stand out? I'm going to stop at that point. Um, and um, we, I think we've got questions and things like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Help us in this regard. 
And the second question I would like to ask you is that we're putting a lot of pressure on mentors here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so my question would be, is a mentor an amateur or a professional activity? Mm -hmm. And uh, can mentors learn to be better mentors? Is there academy? Mm -hmm. Are there workshops? <laughs> How do we do that? Okay, and then it's you who have the turn to ask. Uh, I've got to okay, uh, for a minute when you pick, when, when she picked up the microphone, I thought she was going to do Sing My Way. <laughs> um, um, <coughs> when we talk about sponsors, I, I think we, 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 we tend to use them, like so many words, like mentor gets used for to mean many things. We, the word sponsor gets to mean many things as well. And I think when, if, if we're just meaning by sponsor somebody very powerful who would do things on your behalf, that, it, that comes with lots of baggage. And one of the biggest pieces of baggage is that, that, you, that first you create dependency. And the, uh, and, and the, the, the dependency between uh, a powerful male and a less powerful female can tend to be quite high. Um, and so it, you, you basically let them tell you what to do and you let them shape you in a way that you wouldn't um, otherwise. Um, so there's a danger that you lose your authenticity. And the second thing that happens is, is that when you do get, when you do succeed, and you've got, and you, you've created your business, and it's been very successful, and you've had this powerful sponsor, everybody says, "Ah, oh, yes, but you only got there because they were looking after you." Um, and you know, and so it denigrates, it, 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 it reduces the, the perception of your own efforts. Um, and you, and worse still, you begin to believe that as well, very often. And so that so, so the whole thing it, it, dep it actually depresses your your your, your abilities. It actually adds a negative part. However, if you use if you if you have a mentor and they are well connected, they can do two things for you. One, they, they can certainly introduce you to people, but not but 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 but, but actually but then talk to you. How would you actually make a connection with that person? Yeah. They can certainly they can do an email and say, this is a you know, this is a person you should talk to to, to the to the to the network connection. <coughs> That's fine. That's relatively hands off. Because you're making that connection, um, and then, they, but they can also help you think through: well, who do you need to be in your network? What should your network look like? Um, and help you. With, and and, and one, one of the things that, that's, that's, that's emerged from studies of network networking in the last five or six years is that actually, in taking a more disciplined approach to networking and thinking about how you manage your networks, women can be more effective than men. Because they, they actually can think through and plan how what do I, should my network look like? How will that network work? And so actually there is a there is a plus point. There's an unseen plus point here that actually that, that, that if, you, if a, a sponsor does it for you, you you're losing that ability because once they've gone, that's not part of your, they're his networks, not your networks. But if they're your networks and you created them by identifying who do you want to work with them. And, and, and what emerges from the research on networks is that, firstly, that there are three layers within people's 150. We've all managed a network of 150 problem connections. Um, and, and beyond that, it becomes very difficult, almost impossible to value. They, they just be happy to be people who are, who are on your LinkedIn group. Um, but the people, up to about 20 people around you, people that you interact with in detail um, and frequently, um, and who, for getting things done. Um, and you can actually identify who are the people that you need to do this. And these are people with specific expertise that complement yours. So that's relatively easy to do. The next group of people is the group in the middle, who are people that you happen to know, who perhaps you, know, you might, who might, you might, so some of them may be champions for you in the sense that you know, they will recommend you. And there are ways you can manage those. And the third group is the people who are at long distance from you, who you might only contact once every couple of months or less than that. But these are people who have different ideas, who can provide the creativity, the insights, the things, the, the, the sudden, in, sudden, sudden you know, concepts, think, oh, that's an interesting thing. That's being done in a completely different sector of industry. You know, um, and they might just send you an email saying, have you seen this article? I thought it might be of interest to you. And those are the people who, who stimulate the innovation in your businesses. So, you can do far more by managing your own networks and using the mentor to think about how you do that than you can by saying to the network, introduce me to powerful people. I mean, there's a role for that, but actually the primary benefit is managing and create, creating and managing your own networks. 
Now, the second thing you asked about was professionality. The European Mentoring Coaching Council is in the process of setting up a whole subgroup for professional mentors. And what's happening in a number of countries is, is we're seeing that mentoring is, is going from something that was, that was an amateur thing, although we, we, you know, the international standards of mentoring programs clearly say that all mentors and mentees should be trained. Uh, but now we, 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 there's a whole move to equip professional mentors with the same level of, um, of, of, of academic um, accreditation or, um, or input as a coach would have, an executive coach. And so um, uh, I think this is quite a, a, a major move, step, step forward. It's happening in several countries across Europe now, um, and it's been looked at in Australia. Um, so we, we, we will, I think, see increasing professionalization of, of mentors for those people who want to do this. Um, primarily those people who want to do it as a paid activity. Um, but equally, some of the people who are going through a professional mentor accreditation are people who just want to do it for social reasons as well. So we will, we will see an increasing amount of professional mentors. So this is mentors who are, who've got some experience and actually want to add to it some of the psychology um, uh, and other skills to make that enable them to help you in, to help them to intervene more deeply in uh, for you. So um, I think that's a positive thing to, 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 to emerge in the last couple, last few years. Now it's time. Yeah, please. Who's got it? You're, you're not going to sing, are you? Um, no, I am going to sing. Thank you, David, for your words. And then I just want to ask you if it is common for business people to have several mentors at the same time uh, or not. Absolutely. I mean, just because I mean, within a formal program like this, we would, we would tend to have a single mentor. But part of, the pro part of the reason for having that mentor is that you learn how to work with a mentor so that you can go and create informal mentors as well. Um, and typically, we would see entrepreneurs um, having two or three mentors at a time. Yeah. Just, um, there are people that have created large businesses by just having one, but it's very rare. Um, you know, having a network of mentors, and some of them will drop off the as, you, you know, as, as you outgrow them, as you will, that's fine. But use, use the experience with this mentor be able to give to enable you to actually have to grow, grow a network of mentors. Please, thank you, Beth. Hello, <laughs> my name is Annabella. Uh, thank you for being here. I am enjoying quite a lot this event, and I came all the way from uh, the north of Portugal, so <laughs> I'm the only one from uh, Aveiro, I think. And uh, what I'd like to ask you is. Um, is there um, a special skills that uh, a woman in this case needs to be a mentor? And uh, how can uh, anybody become a mentor in order to also help other women uh, to be successful in their performances and in their jobs or uh, their own business? Uh, because I'm also an entrepreneur and um, well, uh, I also like to, to help others uh, to be um, better and uh, more successful. Uh, is there special skills or is there, um, how can anyone also become uh, a, a mentor? Because well, uh, some women also uh, perhaps uh, are lack of confiden uh, confidence. Uh, they are not very well confident and uh, perhaps uh, some women don't know it's, uh, the, the potential they have inside themselves and uh, perhaps anyone can be a mentor too. Uh, absolutely. Uh, anybody who has the desire to learn themselves and the desire to help anybody else, somebody else learn can be a mentor. Um, one of the things that women are better than men at, on average, is listening. So, we, um, uh, not all the time, um, but... <laughs> But on, on average, women tend to have more, be more effective at this thing. And that's, the pro that's what mentors do most of the time. So, what, so, so we see a difference between people who have not been trained as mentors, just you, you, you're now a mentor, the, the, the men will tend to talk more, um, and, whereas the, and the women will tend to listen more. That's why training is so important, that, that we actually balance this. Um, so, 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 so for the male mentors, the, 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 the critical part of the training is to get them to shut up. <laughs> um, and, and, 
for the women mentors, the critical part of training is to get them to have greater self-belief in the wisdom that they can offer. And those, 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 those would, I think, be the two, the two, two balances. So you can be male or female, you can be, you can be, a, be, can be a mentor. The biggest problem, however, we see with women as mentors is that women who have got to the top of organisations by being like men have forgotten what it's like to be authentic. And they are, by and large, not effective and can be extremely dangerous. <laughs> Please. Hi, my name is Mafalda. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, it's, for many years, I've, I've worked with a few Americans and this mentoring thing is something that always comes. And for many years, I've tried to have somebody to mentor me along the way, which has really been really difficult to find because people don't have time or if they, if, uh, I mean, or it, it wasn't the, the right time, I don't know. But uh, for me, it seems like people don't have time. And even when I started a program of mentoring, it wasn't mentoring at all, yep. uh, which really was a let down. So how can uh, a person that really wants to <coughs> have some, or a guidance or somebody that you, uh, you can speak to, how can we find is there a network of people that we can actually go to? Who, how do we you know, know who is the person that is perfect to help us? I mean. For me, it's been really hard because I always thought it was a really a good uh, way of uh, going about things, but I could never find a person to either help me find some mentors or be willing to do that job. Okay. Well, the first thing that, that we observe is that actually when, when you say people don't have time to, 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 to be a mentor, it's usually, most people will, find, will create the time if they're interested enough. Um, and, and so what we, and they tend to be not to be sufficiently interested because they can't clearly see what it is that you want. Yeah. So you have to be really, really clear. What do you want to use the mentor for? What are the conversations that you want to have with them? And most people, when you say, I'd like to tap into your knowledge about this, this, and this, I'd like, you know, I'd like, you, to, I'd like you to help me think through how I do that. Nine out of ten people will actually feel flattered by that and will respond positively mm -hmm. to that. So, so I think it, 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 it's, it's about actually shaping it so that, so that they really understand what you want, rather than being vague. If you just say, will you be my mentor? What for? <laughs> so you've got, to, you've got to have that clarity about how you want to use the mentor. Um, the second thing is, if, you actually might all try this. Um, think of somebody that you really admire in business. Okay, you may know them first, you may not know them. But who do you, who do you really admire? Okay. Now think about the qualities in that person that you admire. Just two qualities that that person has that you really admire in them. Okay. What some of the research tells us is that you notice those qualities because they are qualities that you also have. <laughs> It may not be at the same level as they have them, but they're qualities of values that you hold that are important to you. That's your point of connection with them. Those things you most admire, admire in them. You, 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 you talk to them about those things. Yeah. That's where you build the connection with them. That they, because they will also, they, they will also be aware that these are these things. They will be, they will immediately have a much, um, they will be attracted to, drawn to people who share those qualities. So that's one of the ways in which, which you live with them. You find people who admire and you identify what it is you admire about them. Yeah, but people are quite happy to be told what I really admire about you is X and Y. It does make them feel quite good. Um, and just having the courage to do that. I, I, I think you know, it's very rare for somebody who takes that, that approach to need to ask more than three or four people before they get the mentor they want. And because you've already got that connectedness, you know that relationship has a high, high potential to work. I really made you think of it, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do we have time? Can I add something? Yeah. You can join us. <laughs> 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 I was thinking about that uh, because I didn't know the program. Right. Just, uh, just because I know one of the... Just because I know uh, one of the mentors here, which I didn't know she was a mentor, <laughs> we were just friends, uh, and 
and I saw this program in her Facebook, I said, why not participate? Because we're okay. just starting a company with my twin sister, so. Oh, who is that, Uh David, thank you for your uh, great presentation and uh, shared wisdom with us. I, I have one, one question to ask you, which is, you probably get thousands of people to ask you to be their mentors. Uh, and you probably are in a position where it, uh, it is common for this to happen. So, how do you say no? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a really good question, and I, I, wish I, I wish I had a really simple answer to it. Um, I, I think what I tend to do is I, I will respond to everybody that, that comes to me where I can, with, 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 a, with a general response. People very rarely ask me, will you be my, my mentor? They will, they'll come to me and say, can you, can you help me with, with around something or other? So I tend to respond as best I can with, with this. And then if they really do want a mentor, then I'm just like, I say, here are some ways of thinking about the kind of person you would, the kind of mentor you would want. So I try and push it aside a little bit uh, to do that. And, and, and I, put, I try and select um, to have a number of, 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 of mentees um, at any one time. Uh, and in make it a mixture. So my primary, uh, uh, well, one of my primary guidelines is what can I learn from this person? So virtually everybody who is my mentee is somebody who I find I can learn from as well. Um, and that actually makes me go, and, and a couple of times I've actually said, you know, what, what can I learn from you? And if they can come back with some interesting things, then that's good. But yeah, it's it's a way of managing it. Thank you for the lovely question. <laughs> I just mentioned because that was my question. Uh -huh. uh, to, um, because you said that mentors can also uh, learn from from mentees, um, and I'm going to be. I am a mentor now. Someone is my mentor. So what what can she learn? What do you see in general? What mentors can learn from from mentees? Are there general aspects you say those are typical um, aspects that are, are, are crucial or you see as a um, extra value in this program? I think if a mentor is somebody who has their own business or works in a large organization, one of the first things you have is mentoring is an opportunity to practice developmental conversations and experiment with somebody else without risk. You know, if there's somebody who if it's somebody who reports to you or is in the same organisation as you, there's a risk that you, you know, you, you'll make a mess of it and then that will have consequences. If it's somebody who can act completely outside, you, there's no risk, therefore you can experiment, you can do many more things. Um, so you have very different conversations, so that's one thing. The, the other thing is that every conversation that, that, that that's, um, I have with a mentor, there are things that arise that are, that are relevant to things that I'm thinking about. And so you know, I can associate with the issues that the mentee, the, the mentee raises. Um, and that helps my thinking. You know, I, I, and I think many of the things, the concepts that come out in the books that, 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 that I've created, I've written, have actually come out from conversations with, men, with mentors and, and, and with, with people I, I supervise or coaches. You know, um, and so it's those conversations that actually give me the clues to things that need thinking about. Uh, many, many of those, many of the most interesting models we've created have arisen because we've had a conversation and in helping the mentee or the coach you think, think through their issue, we've, we've created a pattern, a structure. Mm. I can go on a bit more about that. So that's what I get out of it. Thank you. My question is a little bit about, uh, as I already thought in the beginning, about the matching, mm. the powerful of the matching. And we were talking about how we both can win a win-win situation, and I imagine imagine that that matching could get us further concerning a win-win situation, or not so much. So, concerning the matching of the mentor and the mentee, what would you say that is more critical or that is more important? Well, there, there's there's been quite a few studies looking at you. Does personality matter? The answer is no. You can be very similar or very different. Uh, so uh, there's all sorts of studies trying to find out you know, what makes the best match. The, the answer seems to be the best match is, is a match which, will, which has enough similarity for you to be able to feel strong rapport and have honest conversations, so psychological safety, but enough difference 
three eyes was to, to put a grit in the oyster. So, because if you're too similar, you, you, there's not the depth to the, to the relationship. If you're, too, if you're too different, you may not be able to get, get along together. So it's finding that balance between the two things. And so the difference may also be, it, it may be in, in who you are, um, but it's also about in, 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 in the, the, the different knowledge that you bring. So does that spark creativity for the, for, for the two of you? The one factor that does seem to come across very strongly that you do need for in terms of rapport is a shared sense of values. So if you've got, a, if you've got, I don't know, if you've got a mentor, who, a male mentor, for example, who believes that, men, that women can't, um, um, that, 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 that women's place is in the kitchen, yeah, um, I think that might be a slight problem. Um, so, so, so I think you know, what your, your, your values that you hold seem to be really important. Now people like Stapel in um, in Norway actually use um, um, motivational profiling in order to look at the values that the two people hold and see that they're not too far apart. Um, but that would be the only, only instrument that I think we would use. Things like Myers-Briggs, you're know, probably familiar, the you know, personality profiles, don't yeah. see that it doesn't make have any difference at all. It can be very different or very similar, just like getting married. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, I'm here. <laughs> um, I, I was, you said you had more than 60 books published already, and besides, everyone needs a mentor. Uh, with, I'm a mentee in this program, so I think uh, time is one of the most valuable things in our life, so I don't want to waste anybody's time, and I want to be really prepared for my session, so which one of your books you recommend for me to really have? Uh, <laughs> um, I think that the new edition of Everyone Needs a Mentor the, the fifth edition came out this year, um, so that's um, that's it. That's since it was first came out in 1985, so it's the fifth edition now. Yeah. Um, and that certainly gives you a background and overview. Uh, but um, actually, Anna's got two books here, which I'll just pull out, um, which are about technique for, for, for uh, two books of techniques. Okay. And in the middle, and we're going to write a third one shortly. Um, but basically, having the, having an idea of the techniques which which a mentor may use. You can use those on yourself as well. Okay, thank you very much. Um, any, anyone else would like to put in a question or can we proceed? I assume yes. So uh, we will now.